Hi there, this is Al and welcome to season zero of Open Chats. This is a season where we are talking to our board members and what we're trying to do is that within the Open Chats, we're going to be talking with um, eminent personalities who work in data, who work in tech or who work in development um, or even other interesting areas. And we're going to be talking to them about the future of the world, the future of our Africa um, and the future of our countries. Um, and what we want to do this season is to start by featuring our board members. So today I have with me Dr. Shikovita, who is um, the CEO of Kala, and she's going to tell you a lot more about Kala. She's a data scientist and um, one of the most renowned data scientists in the country. And she's going to tell us a little bit about what this data science means for the future of Kenya, for the future of the government, for the future of the world. Now, before we go there, so you can see there's a button there called subscribe. Please hit it, hit the little bell next to it so that you can uh, catch the next episodes as we are bringing them. On the comment section, please go there and tell us who you think we should be featuring in season one. And if there's a way that you think you can contribute, please let us know in the comment section. Now, Shiko, Karibu san. Asante sana al, thank so, you so much. Before we go anywhere, I think you should probably introduce yourself as you would like to be known. So, uh, I'm Shiko Kitao, mostly known as Shiko. I, I like to be identified with other things other than work. Uh, so, mm -hmm. I'm a sister. I am a to mom. To a twin who has your face. Yes, to a twin who has my face. <laughs> she walks around. Uh, and two brothers. I have two younger brothers, uh, Thomas and Joe. And then I am a mom to seven-year-old Kiyama. I say I'm a daughter of God as well as I'm a daughter of my parents as well. I am actually the CEO of Color. I am a computer scientist, not a data scientist. So I feel like I'm proud of being a computer scientist because data science came as, a, as an outcome of computer science. So it's a subset of what oh, I've see. done with my life. I, I, I love, I mean, if data science was what was available when I was starting school, I probably would have gone on because I, I used to love statistics. Right. Um, but now I, 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 I love the whole computing space. So is it possible that you are a data scientist before you knew you could be a data scientist? That is true, actually. I've, ne I've never phrased it that way. Yeah. I used to, a long time ago, you know, when you're thinking about your future, your purpose, all that stuff. The one thing I used to tell myself, Shiko, you can't be a statistic. You can't just be a line mm. on a... Uh, Excel sheet. Right. The other day I was thinking about it, thinking, yeah, that is actually data science. Never thought of it that way. But yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So you have a long career that has been built over the years with um, on data science, where you've actually started now more recently thinking about how data science comes alive um, in the space of governance. During the COVID years, um, Carla was very involved um, with regard to thinking about using data science for COVID. Tell us a little bit about what you were doing. So, I mean, COVID shocked us as much as it shocked everybody else in the world. And for us, the, the big thing is, how do we as computer scientists and data scientists solve for COVID? What can we do with, with our skill set to solve for COVID? And for us, we started the most uh, amazing uh, journey in our, in our work because we said, what, what did other people do using data and computing? Right. What tools were people building? So we went to like, how is Singapore doing this? How is China doing this? And started looking at it and started saying, oh, this is what's happening. People are using data to model out, to predict, to inform policy. People mm. are building uh, digital tools to help with information dissemination and reporting that, A, I have these symptoms. Yes. Those that very simple tool that everybody was taking, like I have yes. temp high temperature, I'm coughing. Yes. Simple tools and say, can we start doing some of these things? Right. And that right. is the most like I always say that is the most most important thing is use the resources that you have to solve for the crisis. Um, so right. we did a very simple visualization. We took the map of Kenya, yeah. led on KNBS data yes. for population. Right then economic data that we would find online, yes. then comorbidity data that we could find online, right. and mapped out what Kenya would look like if all 50 million Kenyans had COVID. Right. And we took the worst case scenario. Yes. And when we, we look back, we always say that shock therapy actually worked. Right. So we, we present this uh, uh, to Honorable Jomo Shero, mm. 
and say, okay, Joe, this is what we have done. I, is, I hope it's helpful. You know, you're, yes. you're and he's like, you guys did this. He said, yeah. It's a simple contribution you're trying to make. Yes. Yeah. And he said, okay, let me see. And he goes and presents it and calls me and said, can you do more of this? Can I give you more questions to answer? Mm. So at some point we realized we actually are not medics. Right. We're not epidemiologists. Yes. What we are, we are very good computer scientists and data scientists. Right. We can build anything. We yes. can write code. Yes. So we, we called uh, colleagues from University of Nairobi, Professor Thumbi and Dr. Yes. Lois, who is a, a virologist, and said, okay, we've gotten this task. Yes. These are the questions that we are being asked. Can you help us? It's people in the medical field, people in the computer science field coming together to solve a problem because that data was being used on a weekly basis. We never used to sleep from Friday because the NARC used to happen on Sunday evening. Mm. We knew just Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there's no sleep because mm. there are questions coming up yes. rapidly. Yes. And you have that present, you have to have that presentation ready by Sunday evening. So that decisions can be made. That decision can be made. And one of the decisions that was made, I remember the first one mm. was we, we did presentation and showed if COVID was to uh, be all over Kenya, Kiambu County would be the most affected because it has the most population. Right. Diabetes, right. hypertension, right. obesity, all these things yes. are centered there. Right. And I remember somebody calling me, can you watch the news? And guess what? They were closing up markets in Kiambu. Right. Because we're saying this is this is how people are getting COVID. And yes. if it, it leaves Kiambu, it travels all over the yes. country. Yes. So all the markets were being closed down. And the other big one was when they when, when you're determining how to close Nairobi. Because you know, you're trying to make the best decision between economy, the economy of the country, mm. and the health status. Mm. Tell me. I let us talk about COVID for this long because mm -hmm. of the fact that what I wanted to do is to try and figure out how does data science become useful to public service when there is no crisis? Are there other non-crisis environments that you have seen um, data science being used by our governments or by you know decision makers to make really useful decisions? Government actually came to acknowledge mm. that active use of data mm. and data science and not just visualization because government is amazing at doing great yes. reports yes. yeah and you know those pdf things right. that they sent on during the launch it's more than actively and proactively using data to inform decision making yes so a lot of i've seen a lot of that happening not just a lot at the ministry of health mm. but a lot more in other other parts of the government but what we found out during COVID and what is persistent until now yes. is lack of proper infrastructure to right. support uh, data, any type of data work. Yeah, yes. The skill set, while they have very smart people, mm. they, are, they are great policy people, they are implementers, they are thinkers. Mm. They want, we need to embed also implementers within that conversation. Mm. Are there data scientists in Kenya? Is there a good number of data scientists? And is there an opportunity to create more? And is there demand for data science? I'm giving a nod to one professor and demo. Right. Yeah. Hi, Prof. Um, so we're doing this study and he was saying the data science opportunity on this continent is in the millions. Right. So in fact, he, he gave me this number and it keeps bugging me. Mm. There are 700,000 open data science opportunities in this country that nobody is filling. 700,000? Yeah. At that time. Right. And that was a few years ago, right. 2020. So there's a possibility that even... They have called rebuild right. because of, of COVID and stuff. Yes. When you think about data science, people think about modeling and AI yes. and machine learning. Yes. But there's a lot of work between data in, and, modeling. and modeling and writing a, 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 writing a model. Mm. These other th these data clerks, mm. data analysts, mm. you know, uh, data engineers, mm. who are the most dismissed people on the world. I feel so bad for them because yes. they do the hardest work right. and they're most un 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 unappreciated. Yes. The, this visualization, yes. there's all these other layers of data mm. uh, skills mm. that needs to be built up before right. you get a PhD who is going to write for your machine learning model. Right. Yeah? Yes. There is so much demand for these other people. I see. 
but then you know one of the things that is said very often is mm. about the fact that you know there's n there's not enough people that go to university because we have fewer universities at many places mm. and many universities are not equipped to offer data science as a or computer science as a, as a subject mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Um, and I've had criticism about the quality of computer science that is offered okay. and so on and so on and, and all these things. So is this, is this talent then being mismanaged or is there room for a special space for this sort of thing? So I am a PhD in computer science, probably yes. so. Right. And I'm the first person to say you don't need a degree to do computing or data science. Okay. I have had amazingly smart people who've never stepped into university. They write great code, analyze well. They do amazing presentations of their work. They understand what they're doing. Mm. And they, they are self-taught. Yes. Or took a course here and a course there. Mm. We're in 2023, mm. yeah? It's not like us guys were waiting for second-hand books to be sold, sold to us for us to learn this stuff. Mm. All of it is on the internet. Right. Yeah? You just need a couple of hundred shillings per bundle to start learning. Mm. Or if you want an organized space, you go into a class and learn mm. at a, a couple of thousand shillings. Mm. So learning to be a, to any of these skills is, is possible. Yes. And you're not saying you start writing machine models at first. Mm. You graduate yourself. You start from doing data data collection, cleaning, analysis, visualization. By the time you're, you're at a, a visualization analysis, you're thinking, do I want to go that route of writing right. models? Right. Yeah. So we this year, 2023, we said we're going to launch our fellowship and see if we can get 10, 20 to 30 people who we can integrate in that process. Right. We put out uh, the call. We've been getting, on average, I think 500 people apply. 500? 500. In Kenya? In Kenya. And how many days has it been until now as we're doing this? Three interview? days. And now you have how many? We, it's four days. We have 2,000 some, 2,300. So I you think. have over 2,000 people who have applied for this fellowship. 75% possibly who are actually qualified to participate in the fellowship. Yeah, because Kenyans don't read instructions. Yes. Some of them have been sending emails to like our info and right. contact yes. emails. Yes. And you're looking at these CVs, you're thinking, oh my God. It is sharp people. It's sharp people. I've self-taught myself for yes. the past six months, for the past year. I just need a, uh, I just need somewhere I can apply these skills to build my portfolio. That's what most of them are asking for. Let's say yeah. that um, the Open Institute and Kala and a couple of other partners came together and set up a school for these 2,000 people, and it's an applied school for mm -hmm. these uh, 2,000 people to actually come together and build their skill set, upskill themselves, and make sure that they are ready for the market. In your assessment, are county governments ready to bring in, um, you know, uh, data scientists into their, the into their fold? Yes. So we're doing this other study, which mm -hmm. is separate from this. And we are working with like some counties. And I remember some people asking, can we embed some of these young people to help collect some of that data? Right. Yeah. But for me, the most powerful thing about working with young data scientists at county level, at every uh, space, is the feedback cycle. Right. If we can get young people with, on tablets collecting data and feeding back to them and say, this is what the data helped. This is the feedback cycle of this data. It goes to national, anonymized, it lands on the president's desk and comes back as a decision at what you are doing and is affecting your particular job. So the one thing we, we, are, we are learning is how do we make these kind of interventions work without affecting government and right. their procurement? So those, those are the questions that you ask yourself. I see. Yes. So tell me, Based on all of that, I mean, we've, we've, we've gone wide, now we're coming narrow to you. Mm. What do you consider to be your life mission? So my life mission, I always say, think of it, Shiko Kitao, connecting people with opportunities using technology. You know that Connecting contact? people with... Con with connecting people to opportunities, opportunities using, using technologies. technologies. Why did you join the board? I've seen you guys from the very beginning. Like, I feel like I'm a, a proud mother. 
<laughs> We've gotten the privilege as color to work with OI and yeah. seeing the kind of impact of your work on the ground mm. has been amazing. I mean, I'll, I'll have to call out Chief Karaoke because he was my chief. Yes. Yeah. And even my mother yes. knew about Twitter thanks to Chief Karaoke. Yes. And seeing what you guys were able to do. We have a dispensary. We yes. have a police station. Yes. We have all these things that were built because Chief Karaoke decided to do very citizen-driven citizen uh, engagement using data. He was a very data. special man. He was amazing. I mean, yes. we were all so sad yes. when he passed away. Um, and for me, it is, if you can take that yes. and scale it, me, I'm an African thinker, yes. is if you can take that and scale it across Africa, yes. can you imagine how many other lives will be it changed? It will change every life. Is there a way that communities can mobilize themselves to actually use data for decision making without necessarily needing very highly skilled um, sort of data scientists? Or are there data scientists that are, you know, like how you have very expensive doctors and you have cheap doctors and so on and so forth. Are there professionals in data science who would be available to then work with communities and support um, their usage of data? So I, I, I think the, the important part is the infrastructure. Mm. If you have the correct infrastructure in place, data use should not be expensive. Right. You know the building block is mm. data, mm. yeah? How that data is collected, cleaned up, organized, visualized for insights. Because most people just visualize and then they don't give the insights that the visualization is giving. Mm for decision making, how that process is done, some of it can be automated. So it's just a question of, of us, again, not being too afraid of the new technologies yes. like AI and yes. so on. And there you have it, you see. Data science is one of those things that we, we're gonna use and that we will keep using. For You can't escape it, it's part of your life, it's part of the, the things that you will have to live with over time. We got Chico on our board just because of the fact that data is a very big part of the Open Institute. She has served the Open Institute a very long time, for the last 10 years, um, since we started out. Um, when we started out, we were a tiny little organization and we needed a lot of advice with regard to how to use data and so on. And she sat on our advisory board um, for all those years and now she's part of our governing board. Um, and so we're really excited that, um, you know, we're going through this process. The next 10 years are going to be um, defined by um, a lot of the new frontier technologies. They're going to be defined by how we use blockchain. They're going to be defined by how we use data to make people's lives better. So tell you what, just subscribe, follow us, um, and make sure that um, you stay in touch with us because there's going to be a lot of new stories and Chico is going to keep coming back here as we do exciting projects together. Thank you and have a great one.